Hello everyone, I'm Daniela and today's video uh, is way, way overdue. For this New Year's Eve, I decided that I wanted to make a dress out of a fabric that I already had at home, so that was fine. Uh, the only problem was that uh, I was really short on time, so I had to rush things a bit, but I'm still learning how to sew, so uh, that was kind of a problem, but I think it's a decent dress, it's not perfect, but it's an okay sewing job. <laughs> it has taken me really long to get to work on this video, so I don't think I can title it like DIY New Year's Eve dress anymore. So I just, I guess I have to figure out another title for this. The fabric I chose is a viscose one, uh, which drapes really nicely, but I kind of think that it's probably a bit too soft and I think the fit would have improved uh, a lot if the fabric was maybe a bit more sturdy. I don't know, I'm not sure, but eh, as I said, it was the one that I had at home, so I think it worked fine. The pattern that I used is from a store called Buy in London. Uh, I got the digital one and my intention was to lower the waistline uh, to my natural waist and create a gathered skirt so it would be a bit more full. So I started by drawing an adapted version of the pattern. Uh, I didn't film it but here's a recreation. I just added a few extra centimeters in the space between the waist and the dart's apex. Then I redrew those along with the sides. Then I just cut out both the front and the back piece. The back one actually has a big mistake, but uh, more on that later. I was afraid of messing up, so I started by making the lining, since I had much more fabric that I could afford to waste. I folded the fabric in half, so I could cut the front piece on the fold and the two backs at the same time. Placed the pattern pieces in place and held them with some small rocks. Then I cut the fabric. Somehow I lost a clip of footage, but uh, one of the greatest tips I've learned from these patterns instructions is to make a stabilizing stitch on the neckline of your clothes. This prevents the fabric from di becoming distorted. I've also used this on a t-shirt I made in the summer, and it was such a great advice to make the v-neck that I wanted. I used the pattern to mark the darts placement, then I pinned them in place. ironed to hold it and sew them. After that I pressed the darts to the sides and pinned the pieces with the right side facing. After that I pressed the darts to the sides and pinned the pieces with the right side facing. This was when I realized I didn't make the back pattern long enough. As you can see there's a few centimeters missing so I had to redo the back pieces again. Once I was back on track, I sewed in the sides and shoulders. Then I loosely tried it on. That seemed about right, so I moved on into the outer fabric, doing exactly the same thing as I did for the bodice lining. I was feeling lazy, so I just used my picking shears on the seams to keep them from fraying. Next I ironed them flat. Once both the bodies and lining were done, I put them together with the right sides facing, pinned them together around the neckline and sewed it all into place. Since the neckline is curved, I did some small snips all around, almost touching the stitches, so the seam would lay flat once it was turned on the right side. I cut the skirt using the full width of the fabric, I think it was 2 meters, 
and sewed two lines of long straight stitches across the top to create the gathers. Once the skirt was gathered, I matched it with the width of the bodice and pinned it in place. I also did a basting stitch to secure the waist so I could remove the pins and try it on. I also went ahead and pinned the, the zipper in place so I could see if uh, I needed to tighten the, the bodice. Then I cut two sleeves according to the pattern and sewed the sides. After that, I attached them to the bodice. According to the pattern's instructions, you're supposed to ease in the sleeve head with no gathers, which is something that I'm still practicing, but uh, with patience and a whole lot of pins, I think I got a pretty great result. Then I did a basting stitch to hold and remove the pins to sew it on the machine. Trimmed the seam allowance and did the overlocking stitch over the seams to make them neat and keep from fraying. Then did exactly the same thing for the other sleeve. I reattached the skirt since I had removed it to sew the sleeves more easily and sewed it in place. Then cut the seam allowance and finished it with an overlocking stitch again. Added the zipper in and I'll admit that it's not my finest job, but uh, it was getting late and I just wanted to finish the dress. So I didn't bother to unstitch it and sew it back again. The sleeve needed to be tightened a bit towards the end, so I did that, sewed it and used my pinging shears on the raw edges. I also went ahead and created the seams uh, by folding the ends of the fabric twice towards the inside ironed it to keep it in place and sewed it close to the fold edge. Next I trimmed the lining and did an overlocking stitch on the end. Though in retrospect I should have attached it to the skirt because when I wore it the top kept coming up so stitching it to the waist is probably the best option. To finish the back of the bodice I folded the lining, hiding the zipper and end stitched it in place. Lastly, I hemmed the skirt with the same double folding technique as the sleeves, and that was it! This is the finished result. or feedback that you may have will be greatly appreciated so make sure to leave them in the comment section below if you make a project inspired by one of my videos make sure to tag me on instagram at curlymade so i can check it out and i can add it to my highlights where i keep all of your projects thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll talk to you soon bye, bye.